Hey everyone, it's Sunday, March 13th, and we've got a warm day. It's almost 70 degrees. It's a little bit windy though. Uh, today we are going to go ahead and de-winterize the hive, and we are going to get some one-to-one -one sugar syrup onto the top, and I'll show you here in just a second some of the stuff that I'm going to be using. All right, so I've got the sugar syrup in here. I don't have it mixed yet. Uh, but I did four pounds of sugar and four pounds of water um, and that is 64 ounces of water is four pounds so just so you kind of know the math on that uh, 16 ounces of water is a pound so for every pound of sugar do a pound of water uh, I'm going to use this drill get that mixed up and then we're going to throw some uh, hive alive in there I haven't tried that yet I did honey be healthy all last year but uh, I'm going to try this this year if you go over to uh, Brian's channel at Castle Hives on YouTube, uh, he has a discount code for these products from Hive Alive. So check him out and check out that discount code. And then my buddy over uh, at Nature, Nature's Image Farm, Greg, I got this bucket feeder from him while at the Hive Alive conference. So I'm going to go ahead and put the sugar syrup into that and throw it on top of this migratory cover that I got and uh, we'll see how it works out. Here is the information for Nature's Image Farm. If you wanna pick up some of those bucket feeders or anything else that he's got. I know he sells packages and nukes. So check him out. He has a YouTube channel as well. All right guys, so I got that all mixed up and the directions of Hive Alive liquid say to put 2.5 mLs per liter of sugar syrup. I have two liters equivalent of sugar syrup here, so I did five mLs. So I'm just gonna pour that in. And then we're gonna give it a little bit more of a mix here. Mixed up real nice. You can see I've made a big mess already. A couple of bees have already come over here to check it out. And that's it. Let's get it mixed up and we're going to put it in this bucket. Alright guys, we're out here at the hive now. It's windy again, so I, I was going to give you the same warning I normally do. If, if it's very, you know, distorted on the mic, I apologize. Hopefully the wind is not an issue. But what we're going to do is, like I mentioned earlier, is de-winterize this hive. And what I mean by that, this top box that you see here, it's a medium and it's full of pine shavings and underneath the pine shavings, I have a wrapped around feeder full of dry sugar. So I'm gonna completely take this box off, get rid of the pine shavings, get rid of that wrapped around feeder. We're gonna do a full inspection in here. I'm gonna scrape and clean off this bottom board, uh, put it back together, and then I'm gonna put this migratory top cover on there and put that bucket feeder on there that I showed you earlier. And uh, so let's get started on that. All right, so as you can probably see inside of this box, that's full of pine shavings, and then underneath there is a rapid round feeder. So I'm gonna start getting all this out of here. It's just pine shavings, so it can go into my woods over there, no big deal. All right, let's go ahead and get this top box off. I did notice, I was open feeding them last week, and they weren't putting a lot of the nectar up top here. They were putting it down here, which is where the brood, she started the brood nest, so I'm hoping that by me putting this bucket feeder on the top, they'll just grab that syrup and just start storing it right here because it's close. I can feel a little weight for sure on this, uh, your right side, my left. Oh, wow. Wait, tell me. Okay, it's stuck to the bottom. That's why. Let me flip this box up. I thought the pollen patty was gone, but it's, it's mostly gone. Wow, they ate a lot of that pollen patty. It's stuck to this bottom box, so let me grab grab it and show you. Okay, so I had that one and this one. It was a total of a pound, and it's more than half gone, so it's pretty good. I'm also going to go ahead and take this Hive Alive fondant out of here. We don't need it anymore. That was 2.4 pounds. It was the whole package, but it's mostly gone. This was the second one they went through this winter. Uh, they had they had another one that they ate 
pretty much all of and then I put a new one on there and that's all that's left of it. So they used a lot of that. Yeah, and this is global, global patty. It's not the Hive Alive version, it's just straight global. And I'm gonna have to get another one of those on there pretty soon. I'll leave that one, leave that one there, but we'll get more on there. Uh, later this week or next weekend, maybe. Next weekend might be a little, I just put that on a week ago. So that shows you how quick they can go through that. And there are not a lot of bees in this box. It's just about four frames of bees. There hasn't been anything in these end frames, the last two or three frames, pretty much all year or all winter, so. I expect that to be about the same. The main reason I want to get in here, or the main thing I want to look at while I'm in here is the brood. So last week, it was really warm, or sorry, not last week, the week before, it was warm. It was in the 60s and 70s pretty much every day. Felt like spring. I did a hive inspection last weekend and she had been laying eggs and had quite a bit of brood compared to what they had all winter. And then this week, this past week, it dipped down into the teens and it was low 30s during the day and teens at night. So my concern was with the small amount of bees we have in here. See, there's some brood right there. I don't see any bees on it though. So that makes me wonder if it's, if it got chilled. But yeah, that was what I wanted to check on was to see if, if the brood was chilled. But I see one right there. I don't know if you can see that but it looks like there was one that emerged out of there. So maybe they're okay. So this was an outside frame right here and it's just completely empty drawn comb. And I moved that to the middle to give the queen somewhere to lay, but she hasn't started using it yet. Okay, so let's see what we got here. That's just all nectar, sugar syrup. They're packing in there, nothing on this side. So we'll move on to the next frame. That last frame we looked at where I was worried about the chilled brood, I'll look at that again next weekend and see if it still looks like that. I assume if it's chilled and dead, they'll clean it out themselves. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Oh, there we go. Get all that pearly white. Hopefully you can see that. All that nice pearly white larva down in there. All that stuff will be capped by next weekend. Look at that. Good little brood pattern. There's the queen top of the frame see if she's on the video yeah she is right side of the frame really the bottom but the way I'm holding it is the right but you can see all that capped brood across there and then in the middle it doesn't look like she started laying yet but that's probably what she's doing over here getting ready to start laying oh man wait till you see this next frame I'm excited about this. This hive's gonna start growing, which is what I was hoping for. I love seeing lots of brood. The bees are really calm. There we go. That bee's mad. Look at that. Nice, nice frame of brood right there. Nice frame of brood. Same thing on the other side. So they got they got this larva through that cold storm that we had, so happy about that. I'm ready for this hive to start exploding. There's some eggs and some recently hatched larva on this frame on the outside of that uh, brood pattern as well. So that's awesome. Love to see it. All right, let's see what they got on this last frame over here. I see some bee bread. Yeah, that's all pollen, nectar, and nothing on this outside here, so. Just some pollen and bee bread, so 
it's supposed to be nice all this week and I looking into the future I'm not seeing any more really cold days so hopefully she'll start laying real heavy like she did last week I could tell this past week when it was really cold she didn't lay any extra there's not a lot of young larvae in here uh, but hopefully she'll start moving this way and laying this thing up on those empty frames I've got for her all right I am gonna take this box off and clean up this bottom board real quick all right so this is a slatted rack I put this on towards the end of last year yeah there's lots of yucky gunk down here okay girls All right, good enough. A lot better than it was. Let's give them their home back. Clean it up. Uh, this right here is just number eight hardware cloth. This is what I use as an entrance reducer, uh, especially I switched to it in the summertime when they were bearding a lot and it reduces the entrance, which is nice during a dearth but it allows for airflow to come through and they never propolized it and shut it down or anything. Anytime I've ever done upper ventilation with this, they've propolized it and closed it. The bees do not like upper ventilation, uh, but they, they did not mind the airflow through this, through the front entrance. So uh, I kept it on there like this all winter long as well. Now we're gonna get to the good part here. I'm gonna switch to this migratory cover and put that bucket feeder on. I've never used a migratory cover and I've never used a bucket feeder. I always used that wrapid around previously, but I think I'm gonna like this bucket feeder because I can just get fill it back up without having to take off the, the cover. I can check it without having to take off the cover. Um, you know, apparently from what I understand, I just can turn that bucket over and it should create a vacuum and it shouldn't just consistently leak out. So hopefully it works out that way. I'm not gonna put anything up here. I know some people use that, uh, I forgot what the name of it is, but it's that shiny stuff that's like, uh, basically use it as a top cover between the frames and this. I'm just gonna put this straight on there. I may regret it later, we'll see. Okay, so I got that lined up. And now I'm going to turn this bucket feeder over I'm gonna come over here so that you can see it. It should leak out initially and then stop. It's slowing down. And I just put three holes in there, so it's not a lot, but I wanna kinda of simulate a trickle feed. I know Bob has said that trickle feeding like that will along with one-to-one -one sugar syrup will stimulate brood rearing and that's what i'm wanting right now so i'm going to put that on there got my nature's image farm logo right there on the top facing out towards the house and there we go I put little marks on four corners of this lid so I knew exactly where to set this to have it lined up over the hole. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm happy with where the hive is at right now. Got a lot of building up to do, but it's still March 13th, so there's plenty of time. Our, our main nectar flow here in central Oklahoma doesn't really start until early May. So uh, once they build out this bottom box pretty good, I am going to take a split from it and I'll show you. I'll do a video on that at some point and uh, I pretty much do weekly inspections on this. I know some people are against getting in their hives every week, um, but I always get into mine at least once a week, if not every other week at, at the longest. So uh, stay with me as we go through this journey and I'll see you in the next one.